Farming is a family affair for Keith and Viv Richards. They took over the farm from Viv's parents 26 years ago. Now in their 60s, Keith and Viv are looking to their future. Keith is still passionate about developing the 9,000 stock unit breeding and finishing property and struggles to make time away for more than a night or two. He admits to losing energy by the end of the week and recently had a close call with the tractor. Viv is keen to spend more time at their beach house and would like to revamp it for the extended family. Their eldest daughter, Christine, is settled in the USA, married with two children and has a successful career as a lawyer. Their son James got an ag degree, then spent a couple of years shearing. He came home eight years ago when his parents purchased 314 hectares from the neighbours. Happily married to Jess, a dental therapist, they have two preschool children. The youngest daughter, Sam, is a diesel mechanic. She enjoys bringing her family back home to the farm when they can. Keith and Viv are conscious that James enabled them to purchase the new block, and his energy and knowledge is taking the business to a new level. Keith feels compromised between still wanting to contribute physically, but is conscious of robbing the next generation of their opportunity. He thinks it is now Viv's turn as she was recently appointed to the National Council for Rural Women. Living nearer the airport would make travelling easier for her. As parents and business owners, they want to secure their own future, reward James for his past and future endeavours, and pass on a legacy to all three children. This is the story of one family's path of succession planning and how they navigated the many minefields that could tear a family and the farm business apart. Keith and Viv felt unsure how to approach their family about the future of the farm business. They asked their solicitor and accountant but received differing perspectives. The accountant was of the view they should start with immediate family only and not share too much of the financial detail in case it triggered unrealistic expectation of inheritances. Keith had already felt nerves about sharing all the financial details with the kids. The solicitor felt the Richards should fully disclose their finances and include the in-laws so they could contribute to the culture of how the family wanted to operate going forward. I didn't see any reason why we'd have tension from the in-laws, but I did understand Keith's concern, as my family still lives with a fallout after Dad's estate was distributed. Following a suggestion from a farming friend, Keith and Viv got in touch with a succession facilitator to discuss their needs and wants and plan the process going forward. They agreed that the next step should be a meeting with their three children. meeting was planned to coincide with Christine's visit back to New Zealand. Sam found the whole idea very daunting and wouldn't join in the family discussion. She didn't want to talk about her parents not being around, let alone discuss their money and what the kids would get. Jess and I had talked to my parents about our goals when we first came back to the farm and on several occasions since, but these conversations never progressed anywhere. I welcomed the meeting, but it was frustrating that Jess was not invited to join us. It was disappointing not to be involved. I felt my contribution to the farm wasn't being acknowledged. At the meeting, Keith and Viv talked through their feelings and hopes for their future. They said they felt ready to include James and Jess in ownership of the stock and plant. This would create a stepping stone into farm business ownership for James and Jess. Keith and Viv explained their intention to set favourable stock values and low interest rates to make this a viable option for both parties. This proposal came as quite a shock to Christine. She thought James was being well rewarded for his work already. He was being paid a market wage, and the possibility of getting a discounted entry into farm ownership seemed overly generous. She had never been offered an opportunity to work in the farm business, and she felt James was getting preferential treatment. Christine would have liked Sam to have been present to support her. The meeting finished a little tense, it was uncomfortable not to have had Sam there. 
As a follow-up to the meeting, the facilitator arranged individual discussions with Christine, James and also Sam to talk through the meeting minutes and the proposed steps going forward. Sam expressed how uncomfortable she felt discussing her parents' future and finances. The facilitator expressed understanding at her concerns. He also emphasised how excited Keith and Viv were about their new opportunities off-farm and the opportunities they could also provide for their children. He conveyed how much they wanted Sam to be part of the meetings going forward. Four months later, the Richards family met again, with Christine joining in via Skype. Using the latest Federated Farmers Employment and Remuneration Survey, it was found that James had been underpaid for the last four years. Within that time, he and Jess had taken on some of the financial and farm management aspects of the business. Jess's contribution had been recognised and she was paid as a casual on an hourly rate. Keith and Viv proposed the stock and plant would be sold to a new family company over the next two years and outlined the tax advantages of the incremental transition. They would own half of the shares, James and Jess the other half. In 10 years' time, they could lend James and Jess the money to purchase the remaining shares and deal with the loans under their wills. After Sam had received the minutes of the meeting, she had talked through a few things with the facilitator, her husband and friends. She now regretted not being present at the first family meeting. She could see that her mum and dad needed James and Jess to keep growing the business to provide them with a future income. Also that working together to grow the business could give all of them new opportunities. I had a Skype call with Sam which made me reconsider my initial thoughts about James and Jess entering the business. Having seen the information, I now recognise James has been underpaid for what he's achieved with the farm. Also, I hadn't fully understood how much he and Jess have done to support mum and dad and the business. I can see there will be benefits for the whole family if James has the opportunity to move into stock and plant ownership. As a family, they agreed that priority was given to their parents who had invested their lifetime's work in the farm, and the business needed to deliver on that. James summed it up for the family. It's important to acknowledge the history here and get financial security for mum and dad sorted by nailing a solid plan for the business. Jess and I are looking forward to taking on increasing responsibility. Our rewards for that need to be balanced with what the business can provide for my sisters. Eighteen months later, the Richards looked forward to their family AGM. At the first meeting, James and Jess presented an updated five-year business plan. It focused on paying out capital to upgrade the beach house. Capital to be paid to Christine and Sam will be assessed once Keith and Viv have their capital sum paid out. The family also looked at how the business will be governed. They agreed to assign responsibility to a management board with an independent chair for the first three years. Family members not actively working in the business would get six monthly financial updates and operational summaries. That Christmas over lunch with the whole family, Keith reflected on their journey. We all had our challenging times through the transition process. However, if you take the time at the start to identify the goals of the family and keep an open mind to all of the options, the challenges can be worked through. The end result has been an incredibly positive future for our family.